Here we're going to be looking at dividend preferences and how to determine the dividend allocation between preferred stock and common stock when we don't have any specific agreement. Okay, so let's look at the case here where Corporation A has the following stock outstanding and also the retained earnings. So for preferred stock, they're going to have 4,000 shares outstanding, $100 par value, and there's going to be a 6% dividend rate on this preferred stock. Common stock, 10,000 shares outstanding at a $50 par value, and we don't have any any defined uh, dividend on this uh, common stock. It's going to be based on the preferred stock in this example here. So, And then retained earnings, there's going to be $140,000 worth and all are going to be paid out in dividends between the preferred stock and the common stock. And then the preferred stock has two years of dividends in arrears. That is, there's two years of dividends that haven't been paid on the preferred stock and they're going to have to be paid before any uh, dividends are paid out for the current year and uh, for either the preferred stock or the uh, common stock. So this is what we have here. We have really two basic types of preferred stock. So preferred stock is either non-participating or participating. And the question is, how are the dividends allocated between the preferred stock and our common stock when we have these two different cases here, non-participating and participating? Okay, so first here for our non-participating preferred stock, it's entitled to no more than the specific fixed dividend that's declared here are defined for the preferred stock here or stated on the preferred stock and it has to be paid before any common stock dividends are paid and then secondly here for a participating preferred stock well that can involve many different agreements as to how the participation feature can be executed in the absence of any specific agreement the following procedure is going to be what we're we'll be looking at or recommended here and when we mean by a specific agreement here is that the uh, preferred stock here, there's going to, there, after it gets paid here, um, its regular stated dividend here, there's um, also the case here where preferred stock can share with the common stock here on the dividend payments. And this is what we're going to be looking at here when there isn't any specific agreement as to how to handle those, sharing those payments here, or dividend payments between the preferred stock and our common stock. So first case we're going to look at here just so we understand what's going on here. This is where we have preferred stock where it's cumulative and non-participating. So this is the key here. It is non-participating. Now cumulative, that simply means that it's going to have to pay dividends in arrears here. So in this case, let's just look at here how we'd allocate out this total $140,000 worth of dividends that have to be paid here out of retained earnings. Okay, so first thing, remember, preferred stock gets paid here ahead of the common stock. So when we're talking about non-participating, all the preferred stock is going to get is what the standard dividend rate is stated on the stock. So we had 4,000 shares here, outstanding, $100 par, 6% dividend rate, and we have two years in arrears here for a total amount of $48,000. Now, the preferred stock gets its current year dividend paid here too at the same number of shares, $4,000 par times that 6% stated dividend rate for $24,000. Okay, so we paid our, our, our preferred stock. It's non-participating. It receives only the um, dividends that was stated here at that 6% rate for both the arrear, two years in arrears plus the current year. So the remainder really goes to the common stock here when the preferred stock is non-participating. So what we've done here is we our common stock's going to get $68,000 worth of the 140,000. That's simply the 140,000 here minus the 48,000 minus the 24,000 here that's paid to the preferred stock shareholder. So 68,000 remaining balance goes to the common stock. So just to summarize here after the preferred stock dividends are paid here, common stock shareholders receive the remaining balance of the dividends declared. So they're going to get the entitled, the total amount here of the remaining balance. And that's simply because the preferred stock is what they call non-participating and doesn't participate in any dividends beyond what's stated here on the stock. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to be uh, next. We're going to be looking at the case here where the preferred stock is participating, and there is no specific agreement on how to allocate those dividends. Okay, so let's go up and look at that here. So, okay, this is the case here. In absence of any specific agreement for allocating the dividends, you're going to use the following procedure here for uh, allocating between the common stock and the preferred stock here. So. 
Number one here, after the preferred stock receives its dividend payments here in arrears, in the current year's dividends, the common stock receives a like percentage of the par value outstanding. And what we mean by a like percentage here, uh, it's going to be the same percentage rate here that was paid on the preferred stock. So this is um, in the absence of any specific agreement here, this like percentage. And point two here, the remainder of the declared dividend is distributed on a pro rata basis here based on the rate of participation. So we're going to pay the, um, we're going to be looking at this, we're going to be paying the standard dividend rate here on the preferred stock for both the two years in arrears and the current year here. And then the common stocks can also get that current year a dividend rate of a like kind here as a percentage of the of its par value. Okay, so let's look at what we're talking about here on this uh, remainder here, the declared dividend, and how we would calculate it here on this pro rata basis. Now this is in uh, absence of any other specific agreement here. So if, and this is the a pro rata basis is the same here if you've got an, a, some type of agreement or not. You do it in the same sort of uh, the same manner here. So uh, this is going to be based on, we're going to be looking at the rate of participation here. So here's the case here. Here's our general equation or formula here. We take the remainder of the dividend here, whatever we paid out here for the preferred stock and our common stock, what is ever is remaining here, that becomes our numerator here, the remainder of the dividend that's uh, remaining to be paid or that's uh, that was declared here. In this case, we had $140,000 declared here, but we paid out some for the preferred stock, um, two years in arrear plus the um, current year. Plus, we also paid. We're going to have paid the common stock. But after that, there's going to be some remainder of dividend here. Now, we take that remainder of dividend and we divide it by the total par value here of our common stock plus the uh, total par of our preferred stock. Add those together. Divide that into that remainder of dividend here and that becomes the rate or the percent of participation as we call it. Now we take that rate of participation here times the par value for each class of stock here. That would be one class would be our preferred stock, the other class would be our common stock. And that's how we allocate, that's the amount that's going to be allocated based on what they call the participation amount here. Okay, so let's go look at our, our calculations here and we're going to go back to the same calculations that we had started with here. So this is what we're going to be looking at, this like percentage here. So this is the case here. We allocate between our preferred stock, our common stock, and then there's going to be a remainder here of the dividend that's going to be allocated on a pro rate of basis. So this is what we have here. For a preferred stock, again, we had those 4,000 shares outstanding, $100 par, 6%, two years in arrears here. Preferred stock gets paid 48,000. Our preferred stock shareholders get paid 48,000 of those dividends, plus the preferred stock for the current year gets that 24,000 here. Now this is where we come in with that like percentage here. Remember there was nothing really stated in any agreement here on our common stock. So what they're going to do is they're going to get the like percentage or the same percentage that the preferred stock shareholders were getting. That's that 6% here. Now there's 10,000 shares outstanding, $50 par value on our common stock here, 6%. That gives us common stock here gets allocated $30,000 here. So here we accounted for both our preferred stock and our common stock at that a percentage rate here based on what the preferred stock was was allocated here at that, or what the preferred stock was stated at 6% common stock get the same percentage or 6% times the shares outstanding and its par value. Okay so here we set we got $140,000 worth of total uh, dividends that have to be paid out here or that have been declared. We've already allocated 48,000 here for the preferred stock plus the 24,000 for the preferred stock plus that 30,000 here for our common stock. So what it's going to leave us here is $38,000 that has to be allocated. That's the remainder here of the dividend on a pro rata basis. So that's what we're, at, we're going to be looking at based on this equation that we had up here. The remainder of the dividend divided by the total par of preferred common stock plus the preferred stock, that's going to give us that rate of dividend percent of uh, rate of participation here. And then that times, that rate times a par value is going to give what we allocate 
between the preferred stock and the common stock here for that remainder of the dividend. So let's go and look at how we do that here. So the additional amount available for participation, that was that 38,000 that we calculated here. 140,000 total plus minus what we uh, already allocated, 48. Uh, 1,000, 24,000 here for preferred and also 30,000 for the common. So that gave us our 38,000 here. Okay, now is where we take this um, par value of the stock that uh, that's going to be participating here. So this is where we figure out our total par values here for both the preferred stock and our common stock. So preferred stock, 4,000 shares, $100 par. So we have 400,000 here for the preferred stock. Common stock, 10,000 shares, $50 par. So we have 500,000 here. So now we've calculated both the total pars here for both preferred and common. Add those together and we get 900,000 here. Okay, so now this is where the rate of participation comes in. So let's look at that. That's that 38,000 up here. That's that total amount here that's remaining to be allocated. The 38,000, we divide that by the total par value here of both the preferred stock and the common stock of 900,000. So this is where we get the rate of participation here. That's going to be uh, divide those out here, and that equates to four point. I uh, carried it's four two 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 percent here, and that's what we call our rate of participation here. The total amount of uh, remaining to be allocated here at thirty eight thousand divided by the total par value of both the preferred and our common for that percentage rate here. Okay, so now allocating our what they call participating dividend. That's simply taking that our rate of participation here times the total par value for each of these stocks. Preferred stock, the par, total par was 400,000 here. Common stock, total par here was 500,000. So preferred stock would get four point that percentage here times its total par value of 400,000 giving it $16,888. Common stock gets that percentage times the $500,000 total par value for $21,112. So total participating amount here was 38,000 here. That was what was remaining to be allocated here and we allocated here. So much goes to the preferred stock uh, and then so much here for the common stock based on that rate of participation here and its par value. Okay, just to go over this here, there's another way to compute this participating amount here for preferred stock. Simply the total par value or its par value here, total amount, divided by the total par for both the preferred and the common here, 900,000 times that amount that's remaining to be allocated here, 38,000, that would give us 16,888. Same as we got up above here, and for the common stock, it would be the same thing here. Total par value of common stock, 500,000, divided by the total par for both of those stocks here, times that 38,000 gives us 21,112. Same as above here. Total participating amount was 38,000. Okay. So this is the general formula here. Let's go back up to it one more time here. So this is the case here. We allocated both the what had to be paid first here was that preferred stock. Both the, in this case, it had the, the, those years in arrears here because it was cumulative preferred here, those two years in arrears, plus the current year here, plus our common stock. We also paid that here at the like percentage. There was no stated amount here on our common stock, so that just got the like percentage uh, based on the preferred stock percentage rate. And then we allocated those there based on that like percentage or the percentage of preferred stock. And then the remainder here was a uh, uh, dividend here, the remainder here, that was that 38,000 here. That got allocated based on our formula up here. And let's just go over that one uh, time again here. So the remainder of the dividend, that was at 38,000 down here. That got divided by the total par value here for the common stock and the preferred stock, and that was $900,000. So that gave us the rate of participation here. And what we mean by the rate of participation, that's how we divided up that total amount here of 38,000 that had to be redistributed here between the preferred stock and our common stock. Rate of participation here times the Par, total par value for each of those, each class of stock. In this case, we had the preferred stock and the common stock, and that's how we allocated the amount 
to each of the preferred stock here in the common stock. And the reason we did this here, this general uh, example here, this was in the absence of any specific agreement on how we would allocate these dividends. And this is just the general procedure that you would use here, where you're using this like percentage here for uh, that for allocating the amount here to your common stock, and then the preferred stock. And then in this case, because we paid our common stock here at the like percentage and we had to pay our preferred stock at the stated rate here, then we had a remaining amount here that had to be, a remainder of the dividend here had to be allocated on this pro rata basis, which we did based on our equation here where you got the rate of percentage of participation times the using that or taking that times the par value of each of these classes of stock, a total par value of each of the classes of stock to determine the amount that would be allocated in this case to both the preferred stock and our common stock. Okay, so that takes care of our basic example here on what they call dividend preferences and how we would um, determine the dividend allocation here between a preferred stock and the common stock when we didn't have any specific agreement on how the dividends would be allocated.